Wagyu Ji Ka Khalsa, Wagyu Ji Ki Fateh. So we are reporting from Camp Sahaj today. And as you can see in the back, kids are having their dinner. They had a very busy morning. They got up at 5.30. They had a nitnim, they had a divan, and they had all the fun. They did canoeing, uh, they did archery, and then they did evening divan. And uh, we have with the Sadar Indrapi Singh Ji. Uh, welcome to the show, Virji. Thank you, Khalsa, Khalsa, Fateh Ji. And Sadar Indrapi Singh Ji is a, one of the teacher at Camp Sahaj. And we thought, uh, let's have this opportunity to talk to you about Camp Sahaj. And uh, if I know correctly, Camp Sahaj has a theme Shabad. So can you talk about the theme Shabad for this year, Ji? Yeah, so the theme itself for Camp Sahaj this year is the whole idea which a lot of members of the Sikh Panth know is Nanak Shai 550. So this year happens to be the 550th anniversary of Guru Nanak coming uh, to this world. And we chose that as the central theme. And, you know, in order to understand Guru Nanak, obviously we look to the Guru Granth Sahib. And in the Guru Granth Sahib, there is a specific Bani that talks about the progression from Guru Nanak to Guru Arjan. Uh, it's in a var called Ram Kali Ki Var. Um, and it's by, uh, many people know and heard, heard these names by Satta and Balwan. So it's Ram Kali Ki Var by Satta and Balwan, the very first Pori. And a key line of that Pori is, Nanak Raj Chalaya Sach Kort Satani Neev De. So if you want to understand Guru Nanak and kind of maybe, uh, you know, demystify wh who Guru Nanak was, what he was like, this is the Shabad that we chose to kind of go and explore uh, the facet of Guru Nanak and how he passed on his qualities to the other Gurus. Okay. And is, was there any specific reason you chose uh, these lines? or? The um, Nanak Shai 550 is a time to go back to the basics, I think. And what I believe personally, but I think the community is feeling that Guru Nanak is so broad and vast and we may have forgotten that Guru Nanak wasn't just a mere spiritualist or a near, many books you know have, have mentioned like a religious reformer. But they don't know this Raj idea. Raj is very clear. There's something political about it. It could be uh, a nation, but, but you know, there's at least something political. So the, this whole idea, what we all know today as Miri Piri, one of the, I think, misunderstandings is that there was a transformation sometime after Guru Arjan Saab, Guru Hargobind Jinsi kind of merged both religious and spiritual and the Sikh you know, community progressed. What we were trying to get at is actually that whole idea of Miri Piri comes with this idea of Raj and Jog. Uh, which is exposed very well in this Shabbat. So, to bring it back to the basics, that the broadness, the vastness of Guru Nanak's thought and idea, we wanted to bring back to ourselves. I will learn myself, but I think the kids will learn at the camp as well. Yeah, I would like to tell the audience, uh, Virji is not only teacher, he's on the board of Sikh Research Institute, Sikri. So, so tell us something about Sikri, because when the research word gets associated, and I'm sure you guys have done a lot of uh, research. So what are the different uh, aspects you are trying to research and uh, explore more? Yeah, I think, I think um, you know, so Sikh Research Institute, it's been uh, more than uh, uh, 2003 was around the time frame it was established. I started as a volunteer and uh, the whole mission of Sikh Research Institute is more internal community development and it's about education. So the research and education idea is where it's coming from. It's educating our internal community so that this idea of Guru Nanak cannot be just a mere idea and philosophy, right? And more of a practical way of living, but you have to engage with, with Guru Nanak at all levels. And everything we do at Sikri will engage with ideas of Sikhi through Gurbani, like, like we're doing here, but also through um, our history, like what were the episodes in the lives of the Gurus, in the lives of the Gursikhs of the past that inspire us and connect us with that Gurbani. And uh, finally, okay, that's great to learn history, it's great to learn Gurbani and be engaged, so what? The so what is also important, that is in today's world, in our day-to-day -day life, how do we bring that all together and live, not merely look or speak like a Sikh, which is okay, I mean, everyone is at different layers, but also to think like a Sikh. 
So Sikri's mission, through its educational resources, is to kind of progress our community in that direction. So one question I'm very curious to ask you, because it's a research-based uh, association organization. So 550th, we talk about 550th, and uh, multiple decades, multiple things has happened, political environment has changed. Do you feel anything has changed in the last 550 years? So uh, um, back to the research part. So this year we are also having a pretty major focus on Nanak Shai 550. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of works that have been coming out. The very first one that the we as an organization uh, produce is to bring back the idea of Kartarpur Sahib. Right. Many people don't know that Guru Nanak Sahib spent uh, at least more than a decade, I think like in the 18 years or so time frame, right. at, Kartar at Kartarpur Sahib. Right after all his udasis. So there's lots of information, but has not been uh, quite common. So some of our uh, 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 members of our organization, uh, you know, maybe Harinder Singh and Indikor and others have kind of exposed a lot of that uh, information through the, through the research of the historical texts. But back to your question about what has changed. That's my opinion question. <laughs> sure, yeah, it is. We, we're just having conversation. In my, in my opinion, Jo Guru Nanak Sahib, their time issues Hagiyasan, obviously because of time difference, the context may be different. But nothing much has changed. There is still strife at the religious and political levels of, of any kind. There is still inequality. Caste system was uh, the, the main, very well understood at that time. Today it also exists, but there's different kinds of caste system now. The inequalities of economic strata has, is very severe. The geopolitical, uh, you know, clash of civilizations type of idea is very severe, as you know. And even in our country here, uh, the political and, and religious elites are... Uh, in, in a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of impact on what is happening in our lives. So, and this was what was happening, in my opinion, during Guru Nanak Sahib's time. He showed the Tisar Panth, right, the third way. And uh, that way is, in our world, should have been continued and sustained. And it still has lots of value. I think by getting back to the bas basics, Nanak Shai 550, Understanding who Guru Nanak was, how he dealt with those things at that time, we take those lessons to learn how similar things can be dealt in this time that we have today. That's my opinion. <laughs> no, it's good. And, uh, and this question or maybe a comment uh, to this, we very proudly talk about the progress we have done on the technology path. Do you think we're lacking on spirituality path somewhere? Because Guru Nanak's message was about spirituality, about one God, love, being everybody together, uh, throwing caste system out of the window. We very probably talk about Moore's law and we are making great thing, we have to march. But I feel personally that spiritually path hasn't made any progress. Are we stuck at the same place? See, the way I like to answer that is what I had mentioned in the beginning is that I think Guru Nanak's path, if we consider it to be primarily a spiritual path, then maybe even the measurement of that is going to be in what we all, all know. But Guru Nanak's path was the both. It was a spiritual and political path. So I think, um, and progress is uh, a, a measurement that, um, you know, I might not be the one to measure that progress, but I, but I, can, I can give an opinion on it. Um, the strides that Guru Nanak Sahib, the following Gurus, the Sikh community made in the decades after Guru Gobind Singh Sahib was tremendous. You can't imagine the uh, amount of time frames in which, you know, uh, a Kalukara occurs, half the population of Sikhs are massacred, and just a few months later, Lahore is captured again. I'm talking about the 18th century. Um, and then different types of movements have continued in the house of Guru Nanak, uh, both spiritual, both political, economic as well. Uh, the, the, the kind of dynamic change, the totally changing the game of that time um, and in these times, 
uh, I think is pretty substantial. We must say uh, now, whether, can it be more? Can it be improved? Can it be broader applicability? Punjab yeah, which or outside of Punjab in our diaspora, there's so much scope, but you can't boil the ocean, right? We have to, we have to kind of focus on, uh, you know, what is, uh, you know, uh, important uh, in our vicinity, in our sphere of influence, but think globally, right? Local and think globally kind of thing has to be, has to be put in place. And uh, as a Sikh, Sikh B student, whenever I sit with VG, I'm always learning something new. And VG, as you know, this channel is run by all youths. You could see our kids running the whole production. And one question which comes to me a lot is, we learn about Sikhi in the Khalsa school, but when they want to explore further, are there any resources they should consult or is there any I hate to use this word uh, for for a religion or for spirituality. There can't be a gold standard. But is there any gold standard if I want to know myself too? If I want to explore further to know about Guru Nanak Sahib, and there are enough books written. So yeah, yeah, no, that's a, that's an excellent question, um, and there is a gold standard, but it, it's a different way of answering my, your question. <laughs> The gold standard for Sikhi is, of course, our Guru Granth Sahib. So you have to study that. Now, I, I know what you're trying to kind of ask is that, okay, Guru Granth Sahib exists. Is how do, how, what are the resources available to make Guru Granth Sahib approachable? I always tell this, and in, the, in this camp, when we started the first divan of the camp, one of the things we do, especially for the little kids, is at least recite five bodies of Jabji Sahib, just as an engage. And one of the things I told them is if you want to no Guru Nanak, you got to talk to him, right? And the one way to talk to Guru Nanak is through Jabji Sahib, <laughs> right? So even just the five bodies and kind of focusing on what those bodies through the Mool Mantar is talking about is exposing the kids, the youth and everyone to who was Guru Nanak. Having said that, after the Guru Granth Sahib being the primary gold standard for knowing our gurus, knowing our lifestyle, knowing our, our thought process and worldview. Um, for Guru Nanak's history, the first stepping stone actually is by Gurdas Ji's Vara. Right? He, ha he has actually uh, the first uh, var of, of the full uh, 40 vars of by Gurdas Ji are all about Guru Nanak. So that's major, major information that has been distilled through different translations, different commentaries, etc. So I know for little kids it may be a little bit different, but I'm talking about our high schoolers or college-bound kids. The, their level of grasping information is enough that engaging with Pai Gurdasi is, is definitely worthwhile. Then, of course, the history books are plenty. There, there's so many different history books. Let me uh, dig this question deeply because when I talk to millennials, Gen Zs, because that's uh, most of the kids working on Nishkam TV, they get very impressed if you talk about the backdrop of anything. What was the socio-political scenario at the time? What was the environment look like? So when Guru Nanak Sahib wrote about Japji Sahib, I want to know more about the backdrop. When he wrote about Japji Sahib, what was going in his mind? Obviously, he, we can't even think like him. We can't even... But again, what prompted him to write about that? Where was he at that time? So those kind of questions, can we visualize? Because I can talk to Guru Saab if I can have visualization. Yeah, yeah, so can you visualize something, with what was happening at the backdrop? Yeah. The subject matter in, in, in uh, Jabji Saab and a, a lot in Guru Granth Saab is very broad and universal. So there may have been some history associated with when the Gurus revealed the Bani. And that, that does exist, a lot of our uh, oral tradition and also historical texts say that as vakate guru nanak sahab ne kya mardaniya rabab chair bani aaya and we we've heard those sakhis so i i personally don't know about the jabji sahib uh, scenario but there are many like that and i think access to the kids and and others who want to study uh, is happening now you talked about the millennium generation not only do they want to know the background they want cliff notes. <laughs> they want it very specific. That's a pedagogical change which has brought and we need to accept that. So ideas like on YouTube, podcasts, uh, lots of information is available. 
a slight plug of Sikh Research Institute here. So we, we, have, we have a podcast that I think is, is very interesting. Uh, there was a, a Shabbat of the week we did a couple of years ago. Every week, one Shabbat with all of this type of information associated with that, in addition to the meanings of the Shabbat, but also, when possible, some historical backdrop. Uh, we did a podcast, yours truly, on the 12 Gurus. So the 12 Gurus, why? It was Guru Nanak to Guru Gobind Singh Ji, Guru Granth Sahib, and Guru Khalsa Panth, 12. So that's the first question that gets answered. But, but when we did this podcast for each historical event, there's some kind of engagement with Gurbani as well. So when did this Gurbani occur? What's the historical event associated with that? So that's another, uh, I think, very cliff notes, very short. Otherwise, really the research is plenty, but not enough. So lots of different organizations, individuals are working on creating more and more a corpus for us uh, to to understand backdrops of what Guru Nanak and all the gurus were thinking. But no, but we do have a lot of lot of Sikri stuff. Sikri is doing amazing work. Go to their website. I believe it's Sikri dot org. It's great. And now one related question. And uh, and we both work in a corporate world. And corporate world work on data. Yeah. Every project we do, we measure data and we make a decision if this is success. I won't say failure, but it's success or not so successful. So you talked about podcast, and uh, I would like to probe a little further. What percentage of millennials and Gen Zs listen to podcast? What I have seen, you know, I, I, I'm on the board of Sikri. So I'm not directly involved with the programming and what we should do, but um, I, we give direction and ideas, and, and, you know, we have very, very active conversations with the, with the staff of, in the organization and the board. And we had this question like, oh, podcast karario, YouTube videos karario, what is, are we really having an impact? Yeah. So measuring the impact of all of these next gen me media outlets um, was, is a big question for us. So we've collected some data uh, associated with that, but personal anecdote for me, um, we started a podcast long time ago and very uh, not as much hits uh, but then suddenly uh, over the years maybe even the months you know very well i think you've interviewed our, our good friend sarapreet virji he has an excellent podcast that he did then podcasts on sick topics started popping out left and right and on facebook i hear all of these conversations about flana podcast tingana podcast so just from my personal view of observation our community is engaging with podcasts quite a bit in the corporate world I mean I'm listening to my tech prod podcast all the time plus I add on security related podcasts. so this is one venue podcast venue is actually picking on quite a bit in my opinion and again my question was not about which medium is best we need to go to every medium if it's a radio it's radio people listen to radio when they're commuting their podcast people listen their cars videos, TV, yeah, I think every medium is good. I just wanted to know more data, so. I don't have the data off the top of my head, but you would know that, uh, and we talked about this the other day, Nishkam TV, and you know, its ability to get to the masses, you chose the path of YouTube, right? Uh, yeah, you, exactly. YouTube being the other path. It is, it is the de facto kind of outlet to start with, um, and all of the other social media channels. The good news we, is all the analytics are available to you and, and uh, lots of different strategies are in place to increase that. Some happen organically uh, and it depends on the content and others, uh, you know, menat kanni pandia from the organization side as well. So I think, I think you've pick, you picked the right path. Um, definitely study the data, both of the usage of Nishkam TV channel, but also Really, what is this trend of what are, what are the kind of topics and what is the content and the quality that, that uh, your, your viewers are wanting? No, as I said, yeah, every medium is important. So the one thing which we did a little research about starting Nishkam TV as a YouTube channel, and this question comes a lot, why, which TV channel we can watch Nishkam TV? And my answer is, how many millennials, Gen Z sit in front of TV and watch a linear 24-7 programming? They believe in Netflix of the world now. They would like to do binge watching. 
they want on demand when they want it where they want it how they want it so and every kid in this case millennials or gen z's they want to be youtuber so this is a platform for them they can be youtubers they can pick any any topic and be youtuber engage their audience and they can build their audience under this umbrella niche camp so this is one voice so that's what we're doing and uh, you guys are doing great stuff and we would like to collaborate more closely with you guys just to get what's working so we can put more content in front of kids so they can learn because everybody has an appetite to know more about sikhi what do we japji saab but sometimes they struggle because first thing is some kids may read gurmukhi as it is written yeah. and they may not able to sing with the rag but again if there is some resource for them to go so so that's great that one i'll definitely point to um because i myself have taken those courses sikhi has a whole set of courses on uh we have an introduction to gurmat sangeet and then different uh, banis uh, uh, and by the way at different levels so even we have a kid, kids courses as well so that i definitely would recommend your viewers to go and and, and look at but um a small anecdote again that the 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 kids are are the ones who are i am now learning what the the new technologies that are coming out there you know so so it's a constant learning process individually and for organizations like sikri and probably nishkam tv as well the amount that you have engaged the youth on um you know with a really good mentor but trust me i truly believe that these these guys are going to bring in all these newer technologies new mediums and, and new innovative ways of to spreading the content um and uh, that that's coming for sure no i think uh, the right word then a mentor which i would like to choose we are coaches we are on the sidelines they're going to play the game we can teach them how to play a best game and uh, the good thing is we don't want it's not a zero sum game one going to win or one lose we are coaching them to make everybody a winner which which is which is great and uh, would you like to give some message to our young nishkam tv team uh I think they're fort uh, the the fortunate aspect is that the Nishkam TV team is interconnected with the Westboro Gurdwara the Nishkam TV team a lot of your your volunteers are attendees at Camp Sage so the major message which is a generic message is think globally act locally I mean I think the TV medium of course is going to impact globally but the relevant type of topics and subjects and content that are within our our small sangat uh, of 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 massachusetts maybe northeast even uh focusing on on that is going to actually bring uh broad results so so the whole idea of tv is is the is the standard uh, act uh, locally but think globally so and the second one i would do is in the memory of nanak shai 550 get to know guru nanak because the the message of guru nanak through the eyes or the or the voices of the youth is i think uh time for a fresh fresh way of kind of understanding and sharing guru nanak so get to know guru nanak and share what you know is what i would tell you know my 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 young brothers and sisters and young you know nieces and nephews sons and daughters whatever the age gap has become now really <laughs> no it's great and uh, we are not done with veer ji we will be here two more days sunday and monday and uh, we'll pick some more topics this is not a live show otherwise we'd have taken your questions but veer ji will uh, love to have more conversations tomorrow Anytime. but uh, thanks for your time i'm sure the kids going to really uh, benefit from this talk and they will go to sikri and roll to some of the podcasts and the courses you have vai guru ji ka khalsa vai guru ji ki fatah vai guru ji ka khalsa vai guru ji ki fatah Thank mm-hmm. you.